Thank you for coming to church this morning to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We talked about last week how how joy has been sent from heaven. An angel proclaimed the news to the shepherds, glory to God, Christ is born. Lasting joy comes from that baby born in Bethlehem. Lasting joy. Joy is a gift. We need to receive it. We need to believe it. We need to share it. And as I said last week, easiest sell in the world. If you want to share your joy, guess what? The whole world is looking for lasting joy. As I begin this morning, I want to play a clip. It's called The Organist's Last Concert. Go ahead, Paul. The organist's last concert, I assure you. Can we bring the lights up just a a little bit, please? Just kind of put it in a normal setting, if you don't mind. That's a real deal. That really happened. How'd you like to be that organist? (laughs) Some of you are thinking this morning, what was wrong with that? (laughs) It sounded fine to me. (laughs) But isn't, isn't that the reality of Christmas? There you go. Thank you. I mean, we prepare for Christmas for months, don't we? I mean, goodness sakes, uh, right after Halloween, the Christmas stuff is in the stores. It's ridiculous. It's sickening. It's disgusting. I run from it. Who's, somebody said, I love it. <laughs> oh, Paula, God bless you. <laughs> but, 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 but talk about the, the reality. We prepare for months for that day. We do everything we possibly can to make sure it's perfect. And, and then we unwrap a, a present. We unwrap a gift, and it's not what we expected. You know, you know what I mean? It just... And and so many times on Christmas, it's just not what we expected. It's just like that first Christmas. These people. You look at them, and I could tell you this much. That wasn't all is calm, all is bright, silent night, holy night. That first Christmas was messy. But you know what I like about that? Because that first Christmas was messy. Guess what? The messiness of our lives is normal because we're messy. Maybe some of us walked in here this morning and you are perfect and you have no problems. And there are some like that. And I say, that's great. We are glad you are here. (laughs) But most of us, here this morning, are messed up. Can I get an amen? (laughs) Go ahead, put that CT stud. There we go. This is a real evangelist, lived long ago. His name was CT Stud. Now, there's a name for you. Some people want to live within the sound of the mission bell. I want to run a mission, a yard from the gates of hell. That's what we believe at Spirit of God. If you're a visitor here this morning, that's who we are. We're here for the messed up people. That's where I want to be. A few steps from the gates of hell. That's why Jesus was born. That's what Christmas is all about. I love the Christmas story. I, I love Joseph, and I love Mary, and I love the whole scene. But can I be honest with you this morning? I find it very difficult to relate with Joseph. I do. I mean... He was a righteous man. Joseph, the the, the father of Jesus, this guy. He he made all the right decisions. He was obedient. Can you imagine what Joseph went through? He was the perfect human father for the Son of God. 
I have a hard time relating with that guy. Try relating to Mary. I mean, she was amazing. She was awesome. This, this 12, 13, 14-year-old girl, so obedient. She was the perfect, the perfect mother to carry the Lamb of God. I can't relate to that. So, so here's where I'm going this morning. There are some people here at the nativity scene. We put them up here. We didn't have them here last week, but we have them here, the, the shepherds and the, and the wise men. Uh, they're messy people, friends. These people at the manger scene, they're messy. They are messy people that need to be rescued. These guys, they are people that got rescued. They are messy people. The shepherds and the wise men, they had no business being at the manger scene. None. But God invited them to the first birthday party of his son. It's cool. First group, right here, shepherds. <laughs> These shepherds, no, there was nobody lower in that culture than the shepherds. Nobody. It's true. Look it up. They were the lowest of the low. They were the rednecks of Bible times. They were. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with rednecks. I'm one. <laughs> but they were, they were the guys. They were the lowly people. They were the ones that people said, can I? I, I can only imagine Jeff Foxworthy, what he would have done with the shepherds. You guys know Jeff Foxworthy, right? He's the guy that may, has made millions on telling redneck jokes. Right? It's true. I, I can only imagine if Jeff Foxworthy were alive back then, his jokes wouldn't be about rednecks, they'd be about shepherds. If you spent more on your pickup truck than on your education, you may be a shepherd. <laughs> your lifetime ambition is to own a fireworks stand, you may be a shepherd. That's what Jeff Foxworthy would say. I'm not saying these things. If your idea of a seven-course meal is a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken and a six-pack, you may be a shepherd. I could go on, but no, I, I probably shouldn't. If you think the last words of the Star Spangled Banner are, gentlemen, start your engines, you may be a shepherd. <laughs> if you met your wife at a family reunion, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not, going, I'm not going there. <laughs> I didn't say those last words. But the shepherds were considered <laughs> unclean. I love Jeff Foxworthy. They were considered unclean. They were, they were not allowed to worship in the temple. These guys, the shepherds. They were with animals all day and night. They smelled like animals. They lived in tents. There were no showers. They were messy, smelly people. But the first public announcement of Jesus' birth, you getting this? The first memo came to those lowly, messy, smelly shepherds, and it went like this. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Can you imagine these shepherds sitting there? First it was an angel, and then it was a heavenly host of angels. I can only imagine them looking at each other and saying, are they talking to us? Are you talking to me? I mean, I can only imagine what they were saying. But, oh, yes, they were. They were talking to them. And Paul puts verse 14 up because I want to rewrite it this morning. It should have read, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all the messy people. Because all the messy people, friends, means you and me. God told his angels to, to fly over Jerusalem 
which was the center of religion. Think about it. He told his angels to go around Rome, which was the center of power. And he said, go to the folks camping in their tents, the ones that are smelly and messy, go tell them, I bring you good news of great joy. Is that cool? Some of you here might be thinking to yourself, but if you knew what I've done, if you knew how far from God I am, if you knew what I did even before I came here this morning, man, God wouldn't want me anywhere near that manger. But see, you'd be wrong. You're wrong if you think that. Because Jesus loves messy people. Jesus hung out with messy people. Jesus hung out with the fishermen. They were messy people. Jesus hung out with the tax collectors. Oh, they were messy people. Amen? Now give to Caesar. Well, you know, Jesus was a friend of sinners. That's what the Bible says. That's what Christmas is about. Christmas is about Jesus' birth. He was born for us smelly people. And if you think that you have your life together, I, I say good for you. But if you walked in here this morning and you say, man, I hear you because I'm a messed up person. I'm an addict. I fall. I've got a, power, a problem with anger. I've got a problem with lust. I've got a problem with gossip. I'm a messed up person. Person, if that's you this morning, I say you're in the right place. I say to you, you are welcome because all sinners are welcome. Welcome to Christmas. Welcome. There's another group that was there. These guys, the wise men. The wise men came, they, they brought really expensive gifts. They brought gold and frankincense and, and, and expensive perfume. Some say that Mary and Joseph used, the, you know, they sold it and they used it to, to live for a while. I, I don't know all that stuff, but there's, there's some of that. They, they, they were right on time. And, and, and these, these, these shepherds, they, they, it's so cool because the shepherds are there and the wise men are there. I mean, think about it. You have at the manger, think about it, you have... The lowest of the low, the shepherds, and then you have the richest of the rich, and they're all here. And they had no business being there, except that they were invited by, by God. But, but see, it's deeper than that. Look what they're wearing. They're not wearing those Jewish caps. They're the wrong religion. They're wearing turbans. They're not Jewish. They were fortune tellers. They were astrologers. They probably, they probably, I'm sorry to tell you this, they probably read their horoscopes every day. None of the right people are at the manger. Just those smelly, messy shepherds, some animals, and the non-Jewish, non-Christian wise men. Is that cool? And, and, and again, I... I if you're here this morning and you aren't spiritually correct. Maybe you're a visitor here this morning. Maybe you don't tuck your Bible under your arm perfectly and, and walk around with your nose out of joint judging people. Maybe you don't know the Bible backwards and forwards. Maybe you're not one of those religious people again. You're in the right place. Welcome. Welcome to Christmas. There's one more person at that Christmas story. I want to talk about her. Now, she wasn't here. She wasn't at the manger. But she was in the Christmas story. Her name is Rahab. Maybe you've heard of Rahab. Now, if you look in your Bibles, uh, I, I think, Paul, I, I think we have it up there. If you look at Matthew, Matthew, there we go. Now, Matthew 1, verse 16 is the type of passage that we don't read because it's a bunch of names. You keep that up there, Paul. It's a bunch of names. It, it's the ancestors of Jesus. It's so-and-so begat so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. It's 16 verses of a lot of boring names. But I love it because it ends 
with the fact that Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. It's, it, that's what it is. It's the, it's the history of Jesus' birth. But look at verse 5. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. What is she doing there in the middle of the history of the birth of Jesus? Rahab is there. Rahab. Rahab is mentioned here for a reason. She's here in the Christmas story for a reason. Let me tell you a little bit about Rahab. Moses is dead. Joshua is, is preparing the people to go into the promised land. And so he sends some spies in to, to spy on a city called Jericho. And the spies go in there, and there's Rahab. And Rahab takes them in. Rahab protects them. Now, Rahab was a prostitute. She was a lady of the evening. But she takes them in. She hides them and she protects them while they're doing their deal. And then the time comes for them to, for them to go. And, and she, she protects them. She rescues them. And, and she's going to let them out of her window. But before she does that, she says to the spies, she says, I've heard of your God. I've heard of the God of Israel. I, I want to worship that God. I want to be with your people. Because my gods don't do anything for me. They just sit on the shelf. And those two spies, before they left, they said, look, because you've showed us kindness, you and your family will be rescued. But you need to, to put this red scarlet cord in your window. So while the town is being destroyed, we will know how to identify you, and you'll be rescued. So she sent them on their way. She immediately tied this red scarlet cord in the window. Look under your chairs, everybody. There's a red scarlet cord. Go ahead, take a second. Should have one there. It's right by the, the candle that we're going to light before we close, but if you've got that red scarlet cord, yeah, there we go. Hold that cord in your hand as we finish this morning and ask yourself, how does Rahab fit into the Christmas story? Well, well, well think about it. Jericho is burning. Her town is being destroyed. But Rahab realizes that for her and her family, it's a new start. She realizes that she's going to be a new person. Rahab, Rahab, this messy person. And then she's even mentioned in the New Testament. She is famous. She is in the Hall of Faith chapter, Hebrews 11. She's in the chapter. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God. She had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Is that cool? She is in the the Hall of Faith chapter, read it. It's got all the famous people in the Bible, by faith, by faith, by faith. And here's Rahab, the prostitute. She's, she's in the story, you guys. She's in this Christmas story. Why? Rahab turned off her red light. She picked up her red cord. She was saved. There's no other redeeming quality about Rahab that we know of other than the fact that she put out the red cord. We know she's a prostitute. And even in Hebrews, they call her the prostitute. She's just a messy person like you or I. She's no different than you or I. But she put out that red cord. There's no other redeeming quality about the shepherds that we know of other than the fact that they they were the first ones that the angel came to. There's no other redeeming quality about, about the wise men that we know of, except for the fact that they were paying attention. They were watching the stars. That's what they were doing. It's all, that's the only quality about them that we know about. They were watching the stars, and they saw in the stars that a new king would be born. So they followed the stars that ultimately brought them to Jesus. They had a little sidetrack. They went to Herod. We're not going down that path today, but they ultimately went 
to the manger. Rahab must have been thinking, are they really coming back for me? I hung out the cord. Is it real? Am I really going to be rescued? Maybe you're thinking the same thing this morning. Maybe you're thinking that this Christmas. Does God really love me? Will he really, really rescue me? Does he really want me here? Here's some Christmas cheer for you, friends. God loved the prostitute Rahab. She's in the story. God loved the messy, smelly shepherds. They're in the story. God loved those non-Jewish wise guys. They're in the story. And he says to us, here's some good news of great joy to all the messy people. And all the messy people means you and me. So guess what? We need to stop judging people and realize that this red cord means all the people, anybody. The good news is to anybody that accepts this little baby. We need to realize that great joy to all people means anybody. It's been given to anybody. Now, we have a decision to make, but not for this morning. It's been given to anybody. We're all broken, friends. Guess what? God won't leave you broken. He will rescue you. And the message of Christmas is that he really, really does. As I close this morning, as we close this beautiful service, I want to show a video. It's about mannequins. You ever see mannequins in the mirror? I mean, in the, in the windows? They look perfect, don't they? No, we don't look at ourselves and think we're mannequins. But do you ever look at them and you think, man, they're perfect, they're perfect, there's no blemish. They're... Here's a video that I want to close with. Turn the other way, look around. Something big's about to happen. Good evening, Nadia. Nadia, how are you? Yasmin, hello. Alex. Bus. Bus. Hinter dir steht eine Herrenfigur, so wie sie eingesetzt wird, tatsächlich. Und nehmen jetzt all die Maße an, die wir brauchen zur Herstellung, wo es abweicht. Damit wir sie wiederum produzieren bzw. modellieren. mit der Fußform der Zehenform. Es sind nur drei Zehen. Es sind nur drei Zehen. Nicht mehr wundern, ob die Leute es sehen. Behinderung. Sehr irritiert sein. 
schon noch speziell, so zu sehen, wenn man sich nie so im Spiegel anschauen kann. The mannequins in this video obviously point out the fact that nobody's perfect. Can I get an amen to that? And that's the Christmas story. He looks at you and he says, I see your imperfections. I know who you are. I created you. I know you've made mistakes. And he says to us, receive this, but I love you anyway. So take this red cord and do something with it. Wrap it around your wrist, put it on your rear view mirror, put it on your desk at work, put it on your dresser drawer, I don't know, do something with it. And let this red cord be a reminder that the red blood of Jesus covers all of our sins. And when somebody asks you, what's that red cord? What are you doing? Tell them about Rahab. Tell them about the shepherds. Tell them about the wise men. Tell them about yourself. Tell them about the fact that God came to save and rescue all the messy people. And he says, unto you, unto all of us is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The message of Christmas is that nobody is too messy for the Messiah.